What is up you guys? I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to show you how to determine the quality of a lens through the MTF charts without even having it physically. So what are MTF charts? MTF charts are graphical representations of the modulation transfer function of a lens. Basically it's a graphic that tells us how a lens performed in some several tests that they did before the release of the lens. Now in these tests they take photographs of straight lines very close together to determine how a lens performed in sharpness and in contrast. So when we're looking at lenses we're always comparing specs and comparing them with other lenses. We're comparing the focal distance, the maximum aperture, the aperture blaze, the weight, the heaviness and the overall build quality. But above all the most important thing is the image quality. I think we all can agree with that. Now the MTF charts help us to determine the quality of a lens without even having it. We don't have to test run it or or feel it in our hands to determine the quality of a lens. Now lens manufacturers are obligated to perform these tests to determine the quality of a lens and show us the results. So let's see an MTF chart and see how it works. Now this is the Sigma website and if we go to performance of data in each lens we can see the MTF charts. Now we can see two MTF charts. We can see the diffraction MTF and the geometrical MTF. Now the results for the geometrical MTF chart are resulting from a more controlled environment. Meanwhile the diffraction MTF chart is performed or this test is performed in more testing environments, more like in the outside or in the field. So if you take photographs or you're looking more for studio work, you should concentrate on the geometrical MTF chart. Meanwhile, I take photos outside, so I'm going to get concentrate in the diffraction MTF chart. Now the scale that we have at the left side going from 0.1 to 1, that says contrast, that determines the quality or the amount of quality. So the higher the lines are, the more quality is going to be. Meanwhile, at the bottom, we have a scale from 0 to 21. Now the bottom scale or image height represents the distance between the center of your sensor towards the corner. You see a full frame sensor is composed of 43 millimeters horizontally. Now if you cut that in half, you get 21.5. So that's the distance from your scale from 0 to 21.5. Now as we can see in the MTF charts there are two colored lines. There's the red one that represents the contrast and the green one that represents the sharpness. There's also two types of lines. There's the solid lines and the dotted lines. Now the solid lines represent the lines that run perpendicular to the way the test is running and the dotted lines the ones that run parallel. Also the distance between the dotted line and the solid line will determine the quality of the bokeh that we're going to have. If they're very separated that means the bokeh is going to be very distracting and quite noisy. Meanwhile if they're very close the bokeh is very crispy and creamy and body smooth. So a perfect performance of a lens on an MTF chart would look like a straight line all the way in the 1 from the 0 to the 21.5. That meaning that the lens is remaining very sharp and very contrasty throughout the whole sensor. But we all know that a perfect performance isn't possible. All lenses tend to get less sharp and less contrasty towards the borders of the sensor. That's why in the MTF charts we always see this curve at the border of the sensor getting less sharp and less contrasty. Now let's read two MTF charts of two lenses of the similar focal distance to determine which one is better. Now normally lenses are tested at the widest aperture. So in this case, at the left hand side we have the Sony 24mm 1.4 G Master and at the right we have the Sigma 24mm 1.4 Art Lens. So let's check them out. Now the red lines represent contrast and the green lines represent sharpness, remember. Now the first thing that we can see is that the Sony has a very consistent performance in terms of contrast. It starts in the high 90s in the center of the sensor and at the border it still remains at the 90s. It just drops off just a little bit. It's a very high performing contrasty lens. Meanwhile the contrast in the Sigma is just as high as the Sony's at the start. But we can see that at the middle of the test, at the 10 millimeters of the sensor, it drops off dramatically and it goes all the way down to the 0.4%. That means that the contrast is going to start being lost around the middle of the sensor. And remember the green line represents the sharpness. We can see that the Sony in terms of sharpness, it starts quite high around the 80s and drops all the way down to the 50s. The Sigma also starts around the 80s, but it drops dramatically all the way down to the 20s. That means that this lens loses a lot of sharpness throughout the sensor. So in the center of the sensor, both lenses are very good, but the Sigma starts to fall off just around the middle and it loses a lot of contrast and a lot of sharpness. Meanwhile, the Sony is a more consistent performance. Another thing that's very apparent in the comparison of these two charts is the difference or the distance between the dotted lines and the solid lines. We can see that the Sony, the dotted lines are basically following the solid lines, they're very close together. Meanwhile in the Sigma, they do differ and space between them. That meaning that the bokeh in the Sigma is going to be quite distracting and less apparent or less appealing to the eye. 
So what we can conclude from this example is that the Sony has a better overall quality, it has a higher contrast, very consistent throughout the whole image, and the sharpness is quite good, it doesn't drop off too much. Meanwhile, the Sigma starts very good in contrast and in sharpness, but it drops off at the borders or at the middle of the image. It just falls off dramatically the performance. That meaning your image isn't gonna be very sharp or very high in contrast at the borders of your image. So if you had to choose, if you had the money to buy either of them, I would definitely go for the Sony. So those are the MTF charts, guys. I know it sounds pretty complex at the start, but just look ahead the video once again and check some MTF charts of your favorite lenses and you can see that it's quite simple to understand. So MTF charts are very useful to determine the quality of a lens. If you're going for quality, you should be going for quality. You can always look up the specs of the MTF charts of each lens and see how they perform. The companies cannot lie in the MTF charts. They are obligated to tell the truth. So you can obviously see which lens is better performing. Now, if the lens is heavy, if it doesn't focus, if it's slow, if it's plasticky, those are hands-on reviews. Those are different kinds of reviews. You can always see those, but you can always base your interpretation of the quality of a lens through the MTF charts. So that's how you can determine the quality of a lens without even having it physically. So I hope you liked the video. If it was useful, can you please give it a like? It really makes a difference and consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload the next video. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you and see you in the next one.